Hey there smartphone fans, this is Stephen Fox, owner and runner of Smartphone Wars YouTube channel and I welcome you to another episode of Phone Tech Talk. Me guiding you into the world of smartphone technologies but without all that technical, too much technical mumbo jumbo guys, I have to put a little bit in there, sorry, um, to really guide you to some of the things you really don't understand and this week I'll be doing the Kirin 670 um, chip, the new mid-range chip from Huawei, which are they are releasing the direct competitor to the Helio P60 and the Snapdragon 636. So, want to know all about the Kirin 670? How does it compare to the Snapdragon 636, 660, 670 and the new Helio P60? Keep watching and as always, you'll find out. So the Kirin 670, it's another uh, overdue upgrade by Huawei for their budget line of flagship phones. That's right, we're not talking about your Mate 10, we're not talking about uh, the Mate 11, not talking about uh, the P20 that's coming out, but we're talking about those light devices. That's right, the P20 light, the Mate 11 light, where it's going to be, and the Nova 3 are all going to be powered by this new Huawei Kirin 670. And so far in the past, Huawei have actually much more focused on CPU performance rather than graphics or GPU performance. But this year they actually made a big change to that. I was really expecting the Kirin 670 to come with an octa-core chip or like to have uh, four big cores and four small cores like the Helio P60 I reviewed last week. But it turns out it's a hexa-core device which means it has six cores. Uh, much like the Exynos 7872 in the Meizu M6S I reviewed, the Kirin 670 will be packing two very high clocked A72 cores, which are high performance cores, and four A53 cores, which will be for power efficiency and which will be used in 90% of the time because it will save you battery life. Now, since most of you are probably already guessing here, uh, the CPU performance will be lower than Snapdragon 660, 636 uh, and uh, probably lower than the MediaTek Helio P40, definitely lower than Helio P60. But it will still be enough. If you're overly dependent on CPU performance and like you don't play games or put, uh, want to have the fastest user experience possible, I don't believe that the Huawei Kirin 670 is going to be the way to go this year. However, Huawei are vastly overcompensating for this by adding a few really great features. And first of all, they are adding a flagship class NPU, which is a neural processing unit, which has to do with AI. Um, I'm not sure that uh, many have speculated it will pack the same NPU as the Kirin 970, uh, which I currently have and use in my Mate 10. and. Uh, in this, uh, in the, and in the Honor View 10, which are extremely well built phones, I'm guessing that uh, Huawei will implement the neural processing units. It will be cut down from what I have in the Kirin 970 here, perhaps uh, more than half, which will still be the best uh, AI chip. Uh, below the Kirin 970. So this says that uh, Huawei are really, really ahead in this game when it comes to competition, uh, which is a great thing. But on the other hand, uh, it's not being used for anything besides photos these days. So the only use I have from the NPU or the Kirin uh, 970 NPU here is that it, when I take pictures, it recognizes what I'm shooting, applies uh, perhaps some filters to it to make it look better. And in the gallery, I can uh, it, it automatically sorts everything. Like uh, I want to look at my landscape shots; it's already sorted. I want to look at my plant shots, my macro shots, my food shots, my people shots. It, it even can tell which people I've shot and categorizes them in certain folders. So this has been all that there actually is. Uh, I've not seen the phone run faster with this amp. It's not it's not helping the phone run faster because that's one of the things that it was meant to do. Uh, the Kirin 970 is uh, 
absolutely the same general performance as the QN960, which is not bad, but as I said again, less than the Snapdragon 835. So the QN670 is a step in the more 3D graphics driven segment than the previous QN chips. Uh, I guess Huawei just realized people want to play games on their mobiles and people will want to play more and more games with better and better graphics and that previous generation of chips really wasn't up to par with this uh, with the QN650, 655, 658 and 659 weren't up to these tasks as you've seen my reviews out there they struggle with like even medium 3D graphics title games so the QN 670 it will have much better graphics than the QN 659 and we're talking about like huge upgrading graphics it's going to be packing a 4 core that's MP4 Mali G72 so this will bring uh, the GPU performance higher than the Kirin 950 which was uh, their top flagship chip in the Mate 8 at the Huawei P9 which is incredible performance considering this is around $300 phone and will absolutely be competitive against the Snapdragon 660 uh, probably lose to Snapdragon 670 but it will definitely be above the Snapdragon 636 performance and the Helio P60 which Hero P60 has the same GPU core, Mining G72, but only comes with a tri core variant. So, this is an additional core which will bring at least 20 to 25% better 3D graphics performance. So, uh, the QN670 is also going to be made using a 12 nanometer process by TCMC, which, will, uh, which is exactly the same as the Hero P60. Both chips will have the same fabrication process by the same company so they will actually have a level playing field there which is really good for MediaTek on the other hand um, it's actually more like focusing a lot on graphics and 3D performance in this budget phones I really do think the CPU performance will definitely be enough for most people out there uh, for not for the ones who are looking for that uh, extra flagship performance though but enough for the general user which uh, which have for used the Kirin chips till now like the 655, the 658, 659 or perhaps Snapdragon 625 and Snapdragon 630 uh, those people will absolutely be satisfied with the Kirin 670's CPU performance the Kirin 670 will pack a very very good ISP which is an image signal processing uh, which all Kirin chips are actually really, really good at taking photos. So the Kirin 670, let's just wrap all this thing up. Uh, it's going to be new, it's going to be faster than Kirin 659, not much faster in CPU related tasks, but much, much faster in graphics related tasks or in games. So imagine um, the Kirin 659 uses a dual core Mali T830 which is a lower end graphic GPU from the not the previous but the one before that generation so we're talking about uh, uh, more than doubling the actual performance of that so we're talking about more than 100% boost in graphics performance uh, so this means yes the QN670 will absolutely run any game out now on the Android Play Store uh, even on high settings with very good frame rates, we're talking about your Line H2 Revolution, we're talking about uh, player and non battlegrounds for sure. So, it will actually be one of the best chips for 3D graphics performance out there, but it will certainly not be the best when it comes to CPU performance. So, it looks like we have three really good budget uh, chips on our hands with the Helio P60 the Kirin 670 and the Snapdragon 636 coming out very soon for phones around $300 or as I've labeled them budget flagship phones so this has been it for this week's tech talk and my coverage of the Kirin 670 hope you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content like this